We're live. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's stated meeting. At this time, I'd like for everyone to please turn off all electronic devices, turn them to vibrate. Thank you. Madam Majority Leader, all yours. Okay. <laughs> DC recording is started. Majority Leader, have you found the agenda? I'm downloading it right this moment. Okay. All right. Good afternoon. I am Lori Cumbo and welcome to the stated meeting of November 19th, 2020. I'd like to thank you for joining us today and this virtual meeting of the New York City Council. If you would like to follow along, the agenda for today's meeting is posted on our website. Would you please join us for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty, liberty and, justice and justice for all. Roll call. Adams. Present. Ampri Samuel. Ayala. Present. Barron. Last and present. Borelli. Present. Brannon. I'm here. Thank you. Cabrera. Chin. Present. Cohen. Here. Constantinides. Here. Cornegy. Deutsch. Yeah. Diaz. Sunday. Drum. Here. Eugene. Present. Gibson. Good afternoon. I'm present. Jonai. Present. Gordenchik. Here. Holden. Here. Kalos. Here. Ku. Present. Kozlowitz. Here. Lander. Here. Levin. Levine. Here. Lewis. Present. Myself. Here. Menchaca. Present. Woo. Already got my 40,000. Miller. Present. Moya. Present. 
Perkins. Powers. Present. Reynoso. Richards. Rivera. Present. Rodriguez. Presente. Rose. Present. Rosenthal. Here. Salamanca. Present. Torres. Traeger. Here. Ulrich. Alone. Here. Van Bramer. Here. Jaeger. Here. Matteo. Here. Combo. Present. Speaker Johnson. I'm here. Madam Majority Leader, we have a quorum. All right, we have a quorum. Thank you. We will now have today's invocation, which will be delivered by Simran G. Singh, the spiritual leader at the Sikh Coalition, which is located at 50 Broad Street in Manhattan. Welcome. Thank you, Majority Leader, and good afternoon, everyone. It's an honor to be with, all, with you all today. Um, I'm deeply moved by our country's and our city's move towards justice. Uh, this feels especially important now. Um, and as Hindus and Buddhists and Jains around the world celebrate Diwali, uh, the victory of darkness over light, and my own faith, uh, the community of six are celebrating Bandi Chor Divas, the day when our sixth prophet, Guru Hargobin, returned home from unjust incarceration, and as part of his release, negotiated the liberation of 52 others who were wrongfully imprisoned. His example reinforces the core Sikh teaching that justice is central to religiosity. Cultivating our own spirituality is meaningless if it doesn't move us to serve those around us. In Sikhi, we call this love-inspired action seva, and it's a tradition that we cherish and enact daily. As we learn from the Sikh poet, Professor Puran Singh, seva, service, is a prayerful action. Justice is an act of worship. This echoes the wisdom of Dr. Cornell West, who says justice is what love looks like in public. So in the spirit of justice and love, let's bow our heads for a short opening prayer. Vaiguru, Ram, God, Allah, divine. We live in challenging times. We're here to serve and we wanna do our best but we're also imperfect beings living in an imperfect world. Give us the humility to recognize our smallness and our shortcomings and our limits, and that the world extends beyond our individual selves. Give us the courage to grapple with this reality, the courage to work for justice at the risk of our own harm, courage to show up in public knowing that this work comes with exposure and vulnerability and hurt, and yet we do it anyway. Give us the wisdom to see your goodness in all that we encounter. The wisdom to realize that divinity resides equally in each and every one of us, including ourselves. Give us the wisdom to not just believe in our interconnectedness, but to live it. And finally, give us the conviction to help keep us steadfast through all the ups and downs of our own lives and all through the tumult of the world. Give us the conviction to do what is right and to do it for the right reasons no matter how hard it is or what the consequences might be. I'll close with the last line of the Sikardas, a daily congregational prayer, which asks for the well-being of all people and the spirit of optimism that keeps us motivated and connected in all aspects of life. Nanik nam jardikala tere pane sarbatapala. Thank you. 
Thank you so much. And thank you for being with us here today. I'd now like to ask Council Member Margaret Chin to spread the invocation on the record. Thank you, Majority Leader. It's my great pleasure to welcome Mr. Simrad Jet Singh uh, from the Sea Coalition. We are honored that you have joined us today to deliver this beautiful invocation. Mr. Singh is a writer, teacher, scholar, and activist. He is a Zorro Equality Fellow with the Open Society Foundation, a Racial Equity Media Fellow with the Interfaith Youth Corps, and Senior Fellow for the Sikh Coalition. He also hosts two, two shows, a video web series titled Anti-Racism as a Spiritual Practice and Spirited, an interview-based podcast that explore diverse perspective on faith and justice. Simrad is the author of a new children's book from Penguin Random House. Faja Singh keeps going. The true story of the oldest person to ever run a marathon. The first from a major publisher to feature a Sikh story. Simrad is currently writing an adult nonfiction book for the Penguin House, Random House, entitled More of This Please, Seeks Wisdom for the Soul. Mr. Singh also serves on the presidential candidate, Joe Biden's Asian American Pacific Island of Faith Advisory Committee and Governor Andrew Cuomo's Interfaith Advisory Committee. He is a columnist for the Religious News Service, a spiritual, religious life advisor at NYU and Columbia University, and a visiting professor at Union Seminary. This fall, he is teaching a program at Columbia University and Trinity University on anti-racism as a spiritual practice. Mr. Singh is a highly sought out speaker on topics of diversity, equity, and inclusion. He offers programs for all ages and audience from preschool education educator and high school student to university campus and corporate workplace. He is especially passionate about teaching anti-racism through building empathy and reflecting on our core values. Growing up as a turban wearing Sikh in South Texas, Simran learned early that marginalized groups will not lecture their way into dignity and that empathy is truly built when people get to know each other as human beings. This realization is what brought him into the deep work of empathy building as an approach for personal development and social change. We wanted to thank you again for being here with us today and for all your great work for our city and our country. With that, I make a motion for the invocation to spread in full upon the record. Thank you, Majority Leader. Thank you so much, Council Member Chin, and I look forward to picking up that book. Uh, I have a three-year-old, so I certainly thank you for sharing that with us so that we can um, add it to our library. Now, at this time, I would like to have the adoption of minutes by Council Member Danny Drum. Council Member Drum, you might be on mute. I'm on mute, yes, okay. I'd like to make a motion that the minutes of the stated meeting of October 15th, 2020 be adopted as printed. Thank you so much. Messages and papers from the mayor. None. Communication from city, county, and borough offices. M259, Comptroller's Financial Report. Received, ordered, printed, and filed. Petitions and communications. M260, resignation of council member Rory Lansman. Received, ordered, printed, and filed. Land use call-ups. M261, 312 Coney Island Avenue. Uh, thank you at this time. I'm asking for the clerk to take a roll call vote on this item, just the uh, item on the land use call-up calendar. Adams. I vote aye. Amphrey Samuel. Uh, 
Ayala. Ayurai. Baron. Uh, point of clarification, we're adding this to the vote that will occur later. This is, uh, Council Mayor, and this is just a vote on the single item on the land use call up calendar. So this is a vote on that particular item? Yes. Um, I'll abstain for now. Okay. Borelli. I vote aye. Brennan. I vote aye. Cabrera. Chin. I vote aye. Cohen. Aye. Constantinidis. Aye. Carnegie. Vote aye. Deutsch. Aye, vote aye. Diaz. Three. Drum. Aye. Eugene. I vote aye. Gibson. I vote aye. Joan I. Aye. Gordenchik. Aye. Holden. I vote aye. Kalos. Aye. Ku. Aye. Thank you. Kozlowitz. Aye. Lander. Aye. Levin. Aye. Thank you. Levine. I vote aye. Lewis. I vote aye. Mizell. Yes. Menchaca. Aye. Miller. Aye. Thank you. Moya. Aye. Perkins. Aye. Powers. Aye. Reynoso. Richard. Thanks, Brad. Okay. Rivera. Hi. Rodriguez. Hi. <coughs> Excuse me. Rose. Hi. Rosenthal. Hi. Salamanca. Aye. Torres. Aye. Traeger. Aye. Ulrich. Valone. Aye. Van Bramer. Aye. Jaeger. Aye. This is Councilmember Barron. Yes, Councilmember Barron. I'd like to vote aye. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Matteo. Aye. Combo. I vote aye. Speaker Johnson. I vote aye. Today's land use call ups have. 43 in the affirmative and zero in the negative. Thank you. Thank you. Today's land use call up is adopted. We will now have communication from Speaker Corey Johnson. Uh, good afternoon. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Happy Thursday. As always, I hope that everyone uh, is safe and that you and your families are safe and well. Throughout the month of November, we have seen record breaking surges in the number of COVID cases throughout the country. And sadly, right here in New York City, we are also seeing our numbers rising. 
This is a tragic and important reminder that the pandemic is still with us and we must continue social distancing, wearing a mask and doing our best to avoid contact with those outside our household. We have flattened the curve before and we need to do it again. As we head into Thanksgiving holiday, I know all of us are asking that everyone remain vigilant. This holiday will look very different for many of us, but it's important that we take all the precautions necessary to save lives. Now is the time to recommit ourselves to ensuring that COVID does not impact additional people in our city. I'd also like to acknowledge the lives that we've lost to this devastating disease. 24,149 New Yorkers, 24,149 New Yorkers have succumbed to the impact of COVID-19 as of yesterday in our city. This is always such a devastating number to think about and it's a tremendous loss to our entire city. I wanna acknowledge as I always do, a few of the deaths as a result of 9-11 related illnesses since we last met. We recently lost Lieutenant John P. Poulos and firefighters Michael E. Brown and William Hodgins of the FDNY, as well as Detective Thomas J. Gallo, who is 56 years old, and Inspector Michael O'Neill of the NYPD. I'm sending our deepest condolences to their families during this difficult time. Our city will be forever grateful for their sacrifice and for their service to our city. I also want to acknowledge a few other people that we've lost since we last met. On October 29th, former New York City Council member who was Deputy Majority Leader Archie Spigner passed away. Archie was a trailblazer in the borough of Queens. As the first black man from Queens elected to the council, he served as an inspiration for so many. His work stretched beyond his time on the council and his legacy will live on. I wanna send our deepest condolences of council to our colleague, council member Alika Amprey Samuel, who recently, just this week, lost her mother, Ernestine Turner. I knew Ernestine, she was wonderful. I have memories of her marching with us in the Brooklyn Pride Parade two summers ago. And I remember going door to door with Ernestine during uh, Alika's campaign for the council in 2013 and 2017, I apologize. So I know how difficult this is for Councilmember Ampri Samuel and how close she and her mom were. And uh, I just want her to know, I don't think she's with us today, that all of us are really holding her in our hearts and in our hands during this really difficult, painful time. I want to acknowledge the deaths of a few on the job uh, workers from our city. Uh, Sakeo Mahia, a construction worker, died on November 13th in a traffic accident at just 24 years old. Peter Wright, a stagehand at the Winter Garden Theater, died while working at the theater. He was 54 years old. Alfredo Cabrera Laconia, one of our city's delivery workers, died on November 12th in uh, a crash. He was 35 years old. Kevin White, one of our many city transit workers, died on November 7th. He was 55 years old. Ernesto Guzman, a delivery bicyclist, died on November 1st. He was 42 years old. Mohadian Tarwula, a Delhi employee, died on October 26. He was just 26 years old. And Donald Duver, another one of our city's transit workers, died on October 24th. He was 39 years old. I want us to take a moment of silence to remember all the lives we've lost as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. The New Yorkers I just mentioned who died while on the job, Ernestine Turner, Councilmember Ambry Samuel's mother, former council member Archie Spigner, Lieutenant Poulos, firefighters Brown and Hodgins, Detective Gallo and Inspector O'Neill, if we could take a moment of silence for all of them.
Thank you. <clears throat> Today, I'd also like to give a very special congratulations to our colleague, Councilmember Antonio Reynoso, on the birth of his son, Andreas. Very happy for Antonio and uh, his family. A big congratulations to him and his wife, Eliana, and the entire Reynoso family. He already has a beautiful son, Alejandro. Uh, and now he has a second. So we are very, very happy for the Reynoso family. And I wanna congratulate him on this uh, exciting time for him and for his family. Lastly, I wanna wish everyone a very happy Thanksgiving. It has been a difficult year for our city. It's been a difficult year for many of us personally. It's been a difficult year for me personally, uh, but I uh, try to remember all that I am grateful for and I think it's important for all of us to do that. We live in the greatest city in the world. We flatten the curve this spring. We continue to work together to fight the second wave of coronavirus. No matter how you celebrate, please be safe. And now on to our agenda. We'll be voting on the reappointment of Rodney Pepe Souvenir to the New York City Board of Elections. Out of Land Use Committee, we'll be voting on 505 West 134th Street Cluster HPD is seeking the approval of a UDAP and an Article 11 tax exemption to facilitate the preservation of 69 affordable home ownership units in council member Mark Levine's district. 110-40 Saltel Avenue rezoning in council member Francisco Moya's district. Out of the finance committee, we'll be voting on introduction number 2136 sponsored by council member Danny Drum by the request of the mayor which will authorize an increase in the amount to be expended annually in the Bryant Park bid in Councilmember Powers' district and the Flatbush Nostrand Junction bid in Councilmember Lewis's district. We'll be voting on an Article 11 property tax exemption at 1402 York Avenue in Councilmember Kalos's district to create 10 units of affordable housing and we're voting on a transparency resolution. Next, we'll be voting on a package of bills that addresses age discrimination. Age discrimination remains one of the most prevalent forms of discrimination across the country, an issue that has is only worsened during this coronavirus pandemic with layoffs disproportionately affecting older Americans and other vulnerable groups. We want this growing demographic to remain in the workforce, but we need to do more to protect them from discrimination. Today, the council is taking an important step to tackle the issue by voting on a series of bills. The first two bills in this package are sponsored by Council Member Diana Ayala. Introduction 1684A will create the City Commission, uh, would require the City Commission on Human Rights to create an anti-discrimination poster that includes age discrimination and to provide additional age discrimination resources on its website. City employees be required City agencies would be required to display the poster in employee common areas. Introduction 1685A, also by Councilman Brayala, will require all city agencies to provide age discrimination training to their employees every two years. The training would be developed by the Department of Citywide Administrative Services and the Commission on Human Rights. And I wanna thank Valkys Mirig from the staff for her work on those bills. The final three bills are sponsored by our aging committee Chair, Councilmember Margaret Chin, introduction number 1694A would create the Center for Older Workforce Development, an office dedicated to combating ageism in the workplace and to developing an older workforce. The center would be established by the mayor and led by a director who would be responsible for advising and assisting the mayor in coordinating agencies involved in the city's workforce development programs for older adults assisting older adults in joining or rejoining the workforce and promoting the inclusion and retention of older adults in the municipal workforce. The center would also be required to submit an annual report to the mayor and to the city council on its activities. Next, introduction number 1693A would require the Department of Aging to provide guidance and support to the Center for Older Workforce Development as created by introduction 1694A. This bill would also require the existing charter created DIFTA Advisory Council to develop recommendations on how the city can address age discrimination in the workplace 
and how it can develop an older adult workforce. The advisory council would be required to submit a report to the mayor, the speaker, and the Center for Older Workforce Development with its recommendations and findings in December of 2021 and biannually thereafter. And finally, the last bill by Councilmember Chin in this package is introduction number 1695A, which will require the New York City Commission on Human Rights to conduct a two-year study related to age discrimination in the workplace beginning in January of 2022. CCHR would design and implement a variety of methods to assess the presence of age discrimination in the workplace, including through workplace and employment practices, technologies and policies. The report would also include a summary of the initiatives taken during this two year study, a description of the instances of age discrimination found and recommendations to help the city address and combat age discrimination move going forward. <clears throat> I wanna thank from the staff, Newshat Chowdhury and Zia Emanuel Halu for their work on those bills. Thank you, Council Members Chin and Ayala for your tireless work on these bills, your championing of these issues, and as always, for keeping them front and center. With that, Madam Majority Leader, I turn it back to you. Thank you so much, Speaker Johnson. We will now move into discussion of general orders. We will recognize council members who wish to speak by using the raise hand function in Zoom. Please wait before you begin your remarks for our Sergeant at Arms to announce he has begun the countdown clock. The Sergeant at Arms will alert you when your time has expired. Mr. Parliamentarian, are there any council members registered to speak? Yes, council members Chin, Cornegy, and Kalos. Oh, wow, council member Chin. All right, so then we will begin um, first off with council member Chin. Time starts Thank you. now. Oh. Thank you, Majority Leader. Uh, thank you to the, our speaker for your support. I'm really excited that we're finally voting on this age discrimination package bill. And congratulations to my uh, fellow council member Ayala on her two bill. You know, we introduced this bill last year and we had a terrific hearing last October when we heard from a, pro a panel of prominent career women, a lot of them were anchors, uh, on channel one. And they were talking about how they were being discriminated. Uh, they were successful uh, at their job, but they were being demoted, not giving opportunity because of their age. And of course, because of their gender. And we cannot allow this to happen. And it's so upsetting to hear about their story. These are successful women who are being pushed out of their role because of their age. Um, you know, right now, New York currently does have some help for older adults uh, with some training here or some resources there, but it's not all together. And these legislation will at least pull resources and data together so that people know exactly where to go to get help and where to go when they face age discrimination and to really shed a brighter light on this issue that when we're talking about discrimination against older workers, we're not talking about people in their 60s or 70s. Uh, it starts around age 40. So like this is happening to a large number of older workers who are experienced, who are committed, who have contributed so much to our city. So we wanna make sure they are protected. All they wanna do is to protect you know, their job and to support their family. So I just wanted to thank the committee staff who worked on it, uh, New Sacha Dari, my right. legislation uh, team, and all the advocate AARP, um, Radical Age Movement. And of course, we need Jason and Jeff and Kelly to help push these bill forward for a vote. And I'm so glad that we're, it's finally happening today. And I urge my colleague to support. Thank you. Thank you so much, Council Member Chin, and congratulations. You are doing phenomenal work for our aging workforce, myself included. And at this time, I'd like to call on Council Member Cornegy. Time starts now. Councilmember Cornegy, uh, you might need to unmute yourself. Thank you. 
Council, council member, I'm a majority leader. Can we come back to me? I just need to get my remarks. I'm sorry, I'm in the street. I understand. Is it doing all, whatever. Doing all things. Whatever. I'm going to come right back. I'm so sorry. No problem. Get yourself okay. settled and we'll go on to the next speaker. Uh, Mr. Parliamentarian, who is next to speak? Council Member Kalos. All right, Council Member Kalos, and then we'll go back to Council Member Cornegie. Time starts now. Today we're considering a tax abatement for 1402 York Avenue, which will offer cooperative HDFC home ownership opportunities in the heart of the Upper East Side. The 10 studio apartments will be for people at 80% of AMI. That means if you're watching and you're an individual making $63,860 a year or a couple making a combined income of $72,800, uh, these units will have an estimated sales price ranging from $23,972 to $64,437 for a uh, studio apartment on the Upper East Side. I'm personally poured through the financials on this project and was able to generate significant savings for the future owners of these units and urge you to uh, approve this project. And if you're watching at home, apply. You will not see a home ownership opportunity like this in this neighborhood for quite some time. This one was hard to get done. Uh, also, uh, we last voted ahead of this election on the appointment of Rodney Pepe Souvenir uh, when I secured a commitment to take on long lines, expand the number of early voting sites and making sure the scanners on sites actually worked. For the 1.1 million people who waited in line for hours to vote early, now you know why I conditioned my vote on, uh, on those commitments. Uh, the June 2021 primary with more than 200 candidates from mayor on down is going to have a similarly heavy turnout. We need to get this done. Uh, and that was why I will be voting in her favor and asking the council and everyone on the board of elections to make this a task, make this a priority because elections have to work. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Kalos. We will now uh, open it up to Council Member Cornegie. Time Thank starts. you, Madam. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Uh, trying to remain safe during the COVID-19 pandemic shouldn't subject Brooklynites to, to a $10,000 civil penalty. That's why Council Member Drum and I are introducing a bill establishing a six month grace period, refraining from the Department of Buildings for imposing a fine for gas pipeline inspections. The DOB requires building gas pipes systems must be inspected. DOB rules require submission of a certification that all conditions identified in the inspection report have been corrected no later than 120 days, or if time is needed, no later than 180 days following the inspection date. This bill would extend the December 31st, 2020 inspection deadline for buildings and community boards one, three, and 10 in all boroughs to June 30th, 2021. The bill provides that for such buildings inspected between September 1st, 2020 and December 31st, 2020, the certification of correction may be submitted later than 120 days or later than 180 days following the inspection date as applicable, but no later than June 30th, 2021. Failure to act means that small homeowners risk losing their hard-earned equity. That's why we are working further to expand and enhance outreach requirements by DOB. We'll work tirelessly to ensure that DOB to step up and help impacted communities understand what these requirements mean. Public schools shut down for in-person classes, meaning that parents have to scramble to find conditions for their children to study at home or at another location. We have to adjust to the challenges of COVID-19. This legislation provides a reasonable accommodation. I wanna thank council member Drum who's always been a leader and for his partnership on this issue. I urge the city council when necessary to pass this bill. Thank you. Thank you so much, council member Cornegie. We will now uh, open the floor to other members who would like to speak at this time. Mr. Parliamentarian, are there any other members who wish to speak at this time? I love this girl stuff. No, Madam yeah. Majority. There are no other members um, registered to speak. So then, given that there are no other members that wish to speak, we will now go on to the report of special committees. None. Reports of standing committees. Report of the Committee on Aging, intros 1693A, 1694A, and 1695A, Adult Workforce Development. Amended and coupled on general orders. Report of the Committee on Civil and Human Rights, intros 1684A and 1685A, Age Discrimination. Amended and coupled on general orders. 
Member of the Committee on Finance, Intro 2136, Business Improvement Districts. A couple of general orders. Be considered Reso 14A, Transparency Resolution. A couple of general orders. Be considered LU 692 and Reso 1490, Tax Exemption. A couple of general orders. Report of the Committee on Land Use, LU 688 and Reso 1491, 505, West 134th Street Cluster. A couple of general orders. LU 689 and 690, 11040 Saltell Avenue. A couple of general orders. Report of the Committee on Rules, Privileges, and Elections, pre-considered resos 1481 and 1482, various committee changes. Oh, I apologize. On the previous item, land use uh, 689 to 690, 110-40 Saltell Avenue rezoning, it is approved with modifications and referred to the City Planning Commission pursuant to Section 197D of the New York City Charter. On, Thank you. On the report of the Committee on Rules, Privileges, and Elections, pre-considered resos 1481 and 1482, those items are coupled on general orders. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. M257 and Reso 1492, approving the reappointment of Rodney Pepe Souvenir, Kings County Democratic Commissioner of Elections. Coupled on general orders. On the general order calendar, LU 689 and Reso 1493 and LU 690 and Reso 1494, Saltell Avenue rezoning. Couple of general orders, and I would ask that the clerk now please take a roll call vote on all of the items coupled on today's general order calendar. Adams. Congratulations to Councilmember Chin on a phenomenal package of legislation. I'm very proud to be a part of those bills. My deepest condolences to my colleague and sister, Councilmember Alika Amprey Samuel, on the loss of her mother. As one who is still grieving the loss of a parent, my heart sends love and comfort to her heart. With that, I vote aye on all. Ayala. My condolences to uh, Council Member Amprey Samuels and congratulations to Council Member Reynoso and I vote aye on all. Baron. Uh, thank you. I also want to send my deepest condolences on behalf of my family to Council Member Alika Ampi Samuel and her family. And I want to extend congratulations to Council Member Reynoso and his family. And I vote aye on all. And also congratulations to Council Member Kalos for getting a reasonable housing opportunity in an area that has not been very favorable to people in the lower uh, economic income ranges. Thank you, I vote aye on all. Borelli. I vote um, aye, thank you very much. Thank you. Brennan. Uh, with deep, deep condolences to Councilwoman uh, Alika Ampri samuel our, our mothers really are our everything. So my heart really goes out to her. Um, and thinking of you and, and during this really impossible time. Um, and I vote aye on all, thank you. Cabrera. Uh, someone who also lost his mommy very recently. My heart goes out to you, Council Member uh, Ampri Samuel, uh, and my prayers are with you. With that, I vote aye. Chin. Yes, I also like to express my deepest condolence uh, to Council Member Alika Abram Samuel. Um, I know she loved her mother, and when her mother was, was fighting the battle against cancer, we all joined with her to share the love and it's it just so sad um, to see her passing. And we sent our prayers and our love. And um, congratulations to Renoso, number two. I guess you need a daughter. And um, I will eye on all. Thank you. <laughs> Owen. I vote aye. Constantinidis. I just, uh, just want to offer my deep uh, condolences to Councilmember uh, Lika Amphrey Samuel on the loss of your mother. I hope that uh, you find comfort in this very difficult time and sending you the very, very best. Uh, with that, I wish all of my colleagues a very happy and safe Thanksgiving and uh, vote aye on all uh, to be on the docket today. Thank you. Thank you. Carnegie. So 
Bed-Stuy, Brownsville, East New York, we're all inextricably tied. We're family, we celebrate together, and we also, when there's loss, mourn together. So I want to send my condolences um, and my, my heartfelt sympathies for myself and my family to Council Member Alika Samuels. Um, and with that, uh, I vote aye on all. Deutsch. Council Member Deutsch, you're on mute. Yeah, no, I'm not on mute. I got disconnected. Okay. You don't know everything. Almost everything. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> so I want to I want to send my condolences to um, uh, to my colleague and uh, Ali Campi Samuel on the loss of her mother. I also want to congratulate uh, Antonio Reynoso on the birth of his second child, and I'm looking forward to seeing how much he smiles when he has his ninth. But anyway, um, I want to vote I and all. Thank you. Diaz. Uh, my condolences to Council Member Samuel, and I vote yes, see you all. <clears throat> Drum. Yes. Eugene. Uh, 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 I would like to express my deepest sympathy to Council Member Alika Samuel and all the members of the family. We all know how important is a mother. But we know that this is a very difficult moment for her, but I am convinced, I do believe that God will give her the strength that she needs to overcome this very difficult moment. With that, I want to vote yes. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Gibson. Thank you. I too want to join all of our colleagues in expressing our deepest condolences and prayers of comfort, healing, and strength to our dear sister, Council Member Alika Amphrey Samuel, uh, during this time of mourning. I pray that God brings you and your family strength on the loss of your queen. We love you and we are here for you every step of the way. I wanna congratulate Council Member Antonio Reynoso on the birth of your second child. Congratulations to you and your wife. Um, I will be voting on I on all of today's agenda items and I wanna wish all of my colleagues and staff and all of the city council members and staff a wonderful and blessed season of thanksgiving god bless you all i vote i joan i i also want to echo the, my sincerest condolences uh to alika and her family i will do it in my thoughts and prayers during this difficult time congratulations right now so on the addition of your family wishing all of my colleagues all the blessings of thanksgiving and with that, I vote aye. Thank you. Gordenchik. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Majority Leader. I want to join uh, my colleagues in wishing condolences uh, to our dear colleague, Alika Ampre Samuel. Um, may your mother's memory be for a blessing always. Um, it's been a long time um, since my mother's been with me, but I speak to her every day, and I've passed along much of her wisdom. Um, to our colleagues here and to many others. Uh, on a happier note, congratulations to Antonio Reynoso on the birth of, and to his wife on the birth of uh, their dear son. May he be a source of blessing and nachas for you always. And I also want to take a moment to remember uh, the Dean, as we called him in Eastern Queens and really throughout Queens, Archie Spigner. Um, this has been a very tough year for us uh, in Queens. Uh, I lost my two mentors, Nettie Mayerson and Claire Shulman, and now Archie is gone. And as our former colleague, uh, Rory Lansman said in his tribute to him, he learned more Yiddish from Archie than he learned from anybody else. Um, let's give you an idea of the depth and the range uh, of uh, Councilman Spigner. Um, he was a great man. Much of what we see as modern queens, including York College and many other great institutions that uh, we have, were as a result of his work and the result of his uh, willingness to work with others, not just for his uh, for his constituents, but for all of New York City. And he he never forgot where he came from. Um, to his last moments, uh, he was chipper, uh, he was humble, he was wise, and we will certainly miss him uh, here in Queens. And I know that the people. Of, of New York City will miss him uh, because of the greatness that he showed us and um, the time that he gave to us. My condolences to his family 
and to his friends, and especially thinking of my dear brother from another mother, uh, Leroy Comrie, our colleague who um, looked upon him as a, a surrogate father. With that, uh, I vote aye on all. I wish everybody a happy and most importantly, a safe Thanksgiving. Uh, we want you to be here to celebrate Thanksgiving next year. So let's all be smart about that. Thank you and God bless. Thank you. Hold it. Yes, my deepest condolences to Council Member Alika Ampri Samuels on the loss of her mom. Congratulations to Council Member Reynoso and congratulations to Council Members Chin and Ayala on these great bills today. I vote aye on all and happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Thank you. Kalos. Uh, permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. I'm uh, sorry. My, my deepest condolences to uh, uh, Lika Amphrey Samuels and congratulations to Antonio Reynoso. Just a reminder that uh, paternity leave is incredibly important and uh, that it can and should be taken within the next year. I vote aye on all. Thank you. Thank you. Ku. Can I explain my vote? Hello? Hello, Council Member Ku? Yeah, may I explain my vote? Permission granted. I'm Thank sorry. you. Yeah. Uh, first, I want to express my deep condolences to Council Member MP Samuel on her mother's pass away. Now, I share her grief because myself, my mother passed away last year, and I still feel a lot of pain and grief. And I still, all the time, I have memories of my mother uh, coming back to my mind, you know. So I really share her. Uh, uh, grief and my deepest condolence to her and her family. And of course, we had to congratulate uh, to Council Member Venoso on his second son. Um, my happiest moment in life is my two children born 30 something years ago. I remember that vividly when, when my son and my daughter was born in different years. That was my happiest moment. Uh, more than anything else. So I want Council Member Venoso uh, share his happiness. And also congratulations to Council Member Chen and Ayala and others who passed uh, important bills today. They have done tremendous work for our city. Uh, finally, I want to wish everyone happy Thanksgiving. Have a happy family reunion. Thank you. And I vote aye on all. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Koo. Kozlowitz. Thank you. I want to also extend my condolences to Alika uh, Ambry Samuels. I know what it feels like to lose a mother, although my mother passed away many years ago. She's still with me in my heart every day. Uh, also, congratulations to Antonio Reynoso. I remember him when he wasn't even married and had no children. So I wanna congratulate him on his uh, son being born. I also um, want to remember my colleague and friend, Archie Spigner, who taught me a lot. I had the pleasure of serving with Archie for many years and he was a friend and a colleague and he taught me a lot. And I want to wish everybody a happy, happy Thanksgiving. And please, please, please be safe. And thank you to Margaret and Diana for the work that you did on those bills. And with that, I vote aye. Thank you, Council Member. Lander. Request permission to explain my vote. Permission granted. I'm thank sorry, you, Major. Thank you, Majority Leader. I'm uh, coming to you virtually today from under the newly restored Endale Arch in Prospect Park, um, which is a magnificent parks project that just got finished. And one of the things I'm grateful for as we are approaching Thanksgiving is like the workers who are keeping our parks clean and safe. They have been just such a refuge for me in this time. So I wanna thank them. Congratulations, Margaret and Diana, uh, on these great bills supporting our seniors and combating age discrimination, which is truly something we do not 
pay enough attention to and need to do better. So thank you for making us do it as you always do and, and getting these bills passed. Um, congratulations, Antonio. Can't wait to meet the little one. I hope he's got as much uh, spirit and his own mind as much as Alejandro does. Um, uh, Alika, you just have all of our deepest sympathies and, and love and, and it's a rotten, rotten time to lose someone. Um, and you, you know, sending our love virtually is not the same as being able to send it in person. And it's not right to have to grieve like this either, but we're really standing with you as much as we possibly can. And I just wanna wish everyone a Thanksgiving of finding gratitude in the darkest and hardest times to do so, which is really when it is most uh, important. I thought the speaker's remarks on this really are, um, call us all to it. Like it's exactly when it is hardest to find gratitude that it's the most important. So I wish you all uh, a really blessed Thanksgiving. Thank you, I vote aye on all. Thank you, council member. Levin. Um, I vote aye on all and I offer my condolences to um, council member Alika and Samuel, also her mother. Um, you have all of our sympathy and um, uh, congratulations um, to council members Ayala and Chin on the legislation today. Um, Councilmember Kalos on the uh, land use project, and, uh, and congratulations to Councilmember Reynoso. Um, I can say from experience that two is not twice as difficult as having one. It's about five or ten times or twenty times more difficult than having one. So, um, welcome to the club, and um, congratulations! I vote aye on all. Thanks. Levine. Thank you. I just want to echo all my colleagues in offering deepest condolences to Council Member Alika Ampri Samuel and congratulations to Council Member Reynoso, as well as congratulations and gratitude for the work and legislation today of Council Members Chen and Ayala. And I will be voting aye on all. Thank you. Thank you. Lewis. A full on Gallagher show of the next join my colleagues today and uh, so my heartfelt condolences to Council Member Ampri Samuels on the passing of her mother. I want to congratulate Council Member Reynoso on your family um, expanding, and congratulations to my colleagues, Council Member Ayala and Chen, on your legislation. And I also want to thank our colleagues for voting for the Nostrand Flappers Nostrand bid um, located in my district. This is an opportunity to continue to keep Black immigrant and woman-owned businesses alive in troubling times. I vote aye on all. Thank you. Thank you. Maizo. Yes. Thank you. Menchaka. Mission to extend my vote. Mission granted. Time starts now. Thank you. Uh, I want to also send my deepest condolences to my hermana Alika and Pri Samuel and to her family, sending you love and light. And also in celebration of my hermano Antonio and Ili uh, and her new, new baby, congratulations, love and light to you too. Thank you to all the members that put legislation and including the bid. Congratulations on your work today. I vote aye on all. Thank you. Miller. Council Member Miller, you're on mute. Thank you, uh, Madam Majority Leader. Uh, permission to explain my vote, please? Permission granted. Time starts now. Thank you. I, I'd first like to congratulate Ileana and, and Reynoso on the birth of their second child. Um, I'd like to also um, send my deepest condolences to Leslie Spigner and the Spigner family, as much has been said about Archie, the Dean's contributions, uh, uh, not just to government and politics, but to uh, the community. And his just he's the architect for for excellence uh, and particularly political empowerment amongst communities of color throughout, not just New York City, but nationally. And he will be sorely missed. 
and 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 then finally, um, I want to send my and my family's deepest condolences to Council Member Amprey Samuels on the passing of Miss Ernestine, her mom, uh, a phenomenal mom, but even a more phenomenal public servant. And I've absolutely had the opportunity to watch her and watch the children of the community uh, to respond to the work that she has done. Uh, so uh, she is a phenomenal public servant and will be sorely missed in the Brownsville and the greater community. So uh, with that, I vote aye on all. And for those uh, within the sound of my voice, I want us all to remember that the thanks is in the giving. Moya. Uh, I vote aye on all. And uh, again, I'd like to echo the sentiments of my colleagues uh, in sending my condolences to uh, Alika and her family during this time, and also to congratulate uh, Antonio uh, and his wife on the birth of their new son. Thank you. Perkins. I vote aye on all and uh, extend my condolences um, to all who have uh, had to share loss uh, with regard to their loved ones. Thank you, Council Thank Member. You. And how do you vote? I don't know. Thank you. Powers. Hi hey there. I just want to also extend my, my deepest condolences to our uh, great colleague, Council Member Amprey Samuel, on the loss of her mother. I know how difficult that can be, particularly around this time um, when we are all sharing these special days with our family. So I hope her and her family are doing well during a very difficult time. I also want to extend my congratulations to uh, Council Member Reynoso. I know uh, if we were in the chamber, I'd be congratulating Messi since right next to me, uh, but I uh, hope him and his family are enjoying a very special day and special moment as well. And uh, with that, I vote aye on all. Thank you. Rivera. Permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Time starts now. Thank you so much. I just wanted to congratulate my colleagues on this legislation, especially for the aging, um, the age discrimination bills that were really, really uh, important, I think, to our values as a city. Special congratulations to Antonio Reynoso. That's a very, very exciting addition to your family. And of course, um, to my friend, Alika Amprey Samuel, who I have sent my condolences. And I know we are all so, so very sorry. So I vote aye on all and I wish everyone a healthy and safe holiday, no matter what or with whom you're celebrating. Thanks so much. Thank you. Rodriguez. Yeah, then here. So for, first of all, uh, uh, my condolences again to, uh, as, he have been say, as he has been said to my, our colleague and friend, Aleka Prisamon and congratulations, Antonio Reynoso. As a father with two daughters, I can tell you that you will be enjoying the best experience of your life. Congratulations. And with that, I vote aye. Thank you. Rose. Um, sadly, um, 2020 will go down as a year of immeasurable loss. Um, I lost my, both of my parents my first term in, in city council. So I know how difficult it's, it is to lose a parent. So I'm sending my heartfelt love and condolences to Alika Amper Samuel and to my colleague, Antonio Reynoso. Um, congratulations. Um, and you're gonna need another bicycle seat. And um, to the council members and my sisters, um, Margaret Chin and Diana Ayala, thank you so much for passing these meaningful age discrimination bills. I will be the recipient of some of them. And um, to council member Kalos, um, thank you for this thoughtful legislation and to everybody have a wonderful Thanksgiving, safe. Thank you. Thank you. Rosenthal. Uh, with permission, I'd like to echo the sentiments of all my colleagues here. And how do you vote? 
Oh no, I was waiting for the permit. Oh, I thought you were going right into it. No. Um, so I take it. Permissions granted. Oh, thank you. Um, yep. So I vote aye on all. Um, and um, council members Chin and Ayala, thank you for passing this incredibly important legislation. I tried to get a few of my ideas pushed along and now I know why they didn't move far because you had taken them and now you've crossed the finish line. Thank you so much for Mar that. Um, Margaret, you're a fierce champion for our seniors. Really appreciate you. Um, Antonio, congratulations. Uh, you're, you're now moving to one-on-one. -on -one. Next kid will be zone defense. You have to do zones with your kids. Um, Councilmember Lewis, congratulations on your bid and uh, the clear passion and love you show for your community. It's obviously very well appreciated. And uh, to Councilmember Alika Ampri Samuel, it's too hard. It's just too hard. We all we all knew your mom. She clearly loved you and counted on you so much. And, and just remember, you were so lucky to have her, to have her in your life. So, so lucky. Um, may her memory stay warm within you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councilmember Rosenthal. Thank you. Uh, Councilmember Rose, my, my apologies. Can I ask you to uh, clarify your vote, please? Yes, I, I was thinking about that. I <laughs> vote aye on all. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you very much. <laughs> Salamanca. Yeah, my uh, my condolences to my colleague, Alika Ampri Samuels, on the loss of your mom. I'm sorry. Um, and um, and to my, my friend and my colleague, Antonio Reynoso, congratulations on the birth of your son. Um, and I vote aye on all. Thank you. Thank you. Torres. Um, I, I want to extend my condolences to uh, Alika for her loss. And I want to extend my congratulations to Antonio for uh, his newborn. And um, I, I vote aye on all the items on the agenda. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Traeger. Uh, permission to explain my vote? Permission granted. Time starts now. So I too want to uh, express my heartfelt condolences to my colleague, Councilmember Lika Ampri Samuel, um, about the loss of her mother. Uh, her mother uh, served the city of New York, a uh, retired city worker, worked in school safety. And uh, so my heartfelt condolences to her and may her memory be a blessing. And just to show you how life is a circle, I want to now congratulate and Councilmember Antonio Reynoso on the uh, beautiful addition uh, to his family and wish him and his family well. Um, I also just want to note that uh, we are advancing uh, again uh, at the Rules Committee, uh, the nomination of Commissioner uh, Pepe Souvenir, who uh, spoke very uh, uh, passionately about, about the need for language translation services at poll sites. That remains a barrier for many voters in New York, particularly in my community, many others, folks who Russian speaking, uh, Arabic speaking, Urdu, uh, Haitian Creole and others. Uh, that's an issue that I will continue to, to fight on and support. So with that, uh, I vote aye. And I wish all my colleagues and their families very healthy, blessed, safe uh, Thanksgiving. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I vote aye on all. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Balone. Alika, one thing you can count on is this body has always been an extended family to all of us and you can feel the love today. So our family is also extending our condolences and prayers and a, a mass at my parish tomorrow will be offered for your family. Um, hopefully that brings some comfort. Antonio, you've got two. When you got three, come join us with the three parent families. Uh, and, and I liked what Helen said about zone defense. That is very true. Uh, and Margaret and Diana, you know, Margaret, I have stood by your side for seven years with aging and seniors and senior centers. And 
you keep that smile smiling today. You deserve it. You have been the champion of all seniors. They're a great bills. Uh, the words coming back already. Everyone is so proud of these bills that we're voting on today. Uh, as a very proud. So with that, I vote aye on all and a blessed and happy and healthy Thanksgiving to everyone. Thank you. Van Bramer. Permission to explain and vote. Permission granted. Time starts. Thank, yes. thank you very much. Uh, so uh, to council member Ampri Samuel, my sincerest condolences uh, as someone who is helping to care for uh, his mother. She is downstairs uh, right now and we're about to spend some time together after this state of meeting. So uh, I can't imagine uh, the loss and uh, just know that uh, you are loved and so supported um, and uh, all of us feel so, so deeply uh, at the loss of uh, mothers uh, in general. Uh, to Council Member Reynoso, congratulations. Um, and I just want to say uh, this is a legislative body and sometimes we disagree on issues, but I do want to say Peter Ku's comments earlier about uh, his children uh, brought tears to my eyes. Uh, it was a beautiful tribute uh, to uh, the birth of children and uh, a message, a very sweet message uh, to Antonio, but to all of us. Uh, and with that, I vote aye on all. Uh, except I will be voting no on M257 and resolution 1492. Thank you. Thank you. Jaeger. Uh, thank you very much. Sorry about that. I vote aye on all with the exception of intro 2136 on which I abstain. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Matteo. Vote aye on all. Uh, combo. I vote aye on all, and I also want to give a special congratulatory shout out to Council Members Chin, Ayala, and Lewis. The Women's Caucus is crushing it. And I want to, at the same time, I want to reach out and send a message of love and healing to Council Member Alika Amprey Samuel. It was always such a treat for me to see you and your mom when you would come to the city council and how she was beaming with so much pride as she saw you walk around the members lounge and at the stated meetings. It was always so nice um, to see that love and that bond and you should feel proud in knowing that you cared for her to the best of your ability with so much love. Um, it was something beautiful to see. And to the Reynoso family, my congratulations to you. I'm so excited for you. Um, I will not be joining the Two Baby Caucus. Um, in the city council. I can't imagine having two with the way one is and they just got, shut the schools down yesterday. So God help us all. But I, again, uh, I vote aye on all and congratulations again to the Reynoso family. My apologies, council member, if you voted, can you clarify your vote for me? My I vote aye on all. Thank you very much. Speaker Johnson. I vote aye on all. Okay. All items on today's general order calendar have a vote of 45 in the affirmative, zero in the negative, and no abstentions, with the exception of the following. M257 and resolution 1492 have 44 in the affirmative, one in the negative, no abstentions. Introduction 2136 has 44 in the affirmative, zero in the negative, one abstention and land use call offs remain the same at 43 in the affirmative, zero in the negative. Thank you. Thank you so much. The items on today's general orders calendar are adopted. Introduction and reading of bills. All bills are referred to committees as indicated on today's agenda. 
Thank you, Speaker Johnson. There are no resolutions on today's calendar, so we will now move into general discussion. As a reminder, please wait until the Sergeant at Arms begins the countdown clock before you begin your remarks. Mr. Parliamentarian, are there any members who wish to speak? Yes, Madam Majority Leader, there are several. Uh, the first batch is Council Members Lewis, Ulrich, and Barron. Council Member Lewis, you may begin following the time clock. Time starts now. Thank you, Speaker Corey Johnson and Majority Leader Cumbo for the opportunity to briefly discuss my proposed bills today. The COVID-19 pandemic has wreaked havoc on small businesses throughout our city, particularly immigrant women and black owned businesses. To help alleviate some of the economic setbacks that small business owners are experiencing, I'm introducing three bills. Resol 1483, a resolution calling on Congress to pass and the president to sign legislation that will prohibit property owners and loan service agencies from negatively impacting credit scores of businesses, property owners, or renters for non-payment due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Resol 1484 calls on the New York State Legislature to pass and the governor to sign legislation that would add at minimum a six-month extension to the back end of lease or mortgages that would not penalize or create a balloon payment to the arrears that were accumulated during the COVID-19 pandemic. And the last one is Reso, Reso 1484, which calls on the governor to create a state funded grant program to support undocumented businesses owners devastated by the COVID-19 pandemic. These bills will cover small business fears related to their credit scores being compromised and ruined due to COVID-19, providing risk-free extensions to leases and mortgages without penalties or balloon payments, and would create a state-funded program to support undocumented business owners who have previously been ignored by the federal, state, and city grants. In this unprecedented time in the history of our city, which is facing the inevitable prospect of another shutdown in the wake of a second wave of COVID-19 cases, we cannot abandon our small business owners. I encourage my colleagues to sign on to these bills and to help our immigrant, minority, and women-owned businesses make it through the second wave. Thank you again for the opportunity to amplify the voices of our small businesses and small business owners who need our support to survive through the remainder pandemic. Thank you. Thank you. Councilmember Ulrich. Time starts now. Councilmember Ulrich does not wish to speak. Madam Majority Leader, you can move to the next speaker, Councilmember Barron. Councilmember Barron, you may begin. Time starts now. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Just want to note that Yesterday's Daily News had an article which indicated that Amazon has signed leases to open two distribution centers in my community. We all know Amazon's track record at, uh, in terms of its workers and the conditions that they complain about, despite the fact that the, Mr. Bezos is a billionaire many hundreds of times over. So we're very concerned that there was no outreach to the community members, nor to the community board, nor to the electeds about the plans for this facility. And we will be taking further actions in that regard. And secondly, as was announced yesterday, the New York City public schools are closed. What is most troubling to me is that there are 60,000 children who do not have devices. And that last week it was, it was reported that children in shelters could expect to not get any connection until the end of the school year. This is totally unacceptable. And I think it's incumbent on us as the legislative body to ensure that all children have a device as soon as possible by the end of this month and certainly by the time that blended learning may come back into existence. But we've got to make sure that particularly our black and brown communities, which are the zip codes that do not have those devices are not further beset with not getting the resources that they need to be able to compete in the centuries in this 21st century and moving forward. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Barron. 
Are there any other members who wish to speak at this time, Mr. Parliamentarian? Yes, council members Miller, Levin, and Kalos. Council member Miller, you may begin. Okay. Thank, time. You. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. I just want to uh, inform my colleagues that tomorrow the, the Committee on Civil Service and Labor will be holding a hearing. We'll be hearing a series of bills, important legislation that will really impact the lives of the municipal workforce and the workforce around the city of New York. Um, they're, they're, these are the people that have since March made our lives seamless, that have continued to provide critical services for all of uh, the greater community, uh, New York City community, and yet um, they have many times gone uh, without proper PPEs, proper guidance, and so we are going to be evaluating um, some of the uh, services that have, have been and not been provided, particularly around the area of around information and instructions, bulletins that are mandated and posted by governing bodies, as well as legislation that will provide a board that will oversee uh, these um, areas and provide uh, insight and oversight and, and ultimately um, will be governing and uh, for these uh, city agencies. So I look forward to that hearing. I ask that all participate. These are the critical workers that really give our city value, EMS workers, teachers, <clears throat> social workers, and, and so forth. Please come out and, and, and be supportive. So we, we, we have two uh, intros that are occurring uh, in, co in uh, conjunction with that, intro 2121, 2161 and 2162. Uh, there are two other pieces of legislation that we will be hearing that are information pieces sponsored by uh, Council Member Levine and resolution sponsored by um, Council Member uh, coming to me. Brennan. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Miller. We will now go to Council Member Lewis. Excuse me, Levin. Can I Starting go uh, at, uh, at the end? I'm sorry, I'm just look, uh, looking up some additional remarks. Okay, we can go on to Council Member Kalos. Starting time. Uh, thank you to uh, all of my colleagues for their appreciations over the uh, modest affordable housing project we were able to do with HPD. I, I just want to be frank and honest. We've done over a thousand units of affordable housing in my district on the east side of Roosevelt Island. The mayor and HPD have opposed me at every step. We actually have to do about 900 units directly with Governor Cuomo and DHCR. Uh, so uh, I didn't go through any uh, approvals by the council, but uh, we, we've, been, we've been hard at work and uh, I challenge Mayor de Blasio to bring mandatory inclusionary housing to the Upper East Side. I'm willing to give up a community preference so that we can actually have affordability and integration. Uh, but the mayor and HPD have blocked me at every single step. Uh, I'm, what I plan to say is just that I'm, I'm proud to be introducing three bills. Uh, the first bill is with Transportation Chair Donis Rodriguez, introduction 2155, a reintroduction of a 2014 bill for a universal e-hail app, allowing any cab driver to accept e-hails through a municipal app or open API. This bill seeks to empower yellow and green cab drivers over the apps like Uber and Lyft and level the playing field. The pandemic has drastically reduced the number of trips per day from 750,000 for e hails and 231,000 for yellow and greens to 144,000 and 9,000 at their lowest point. Uh, e hails have rebounded, but the yellow and greens have not. Under this bill, yellow and green cab drivers would be able to pick up e hails from any app. Uh, the next two bills, introduction 2153 and 2154, taken together would prevent illegal coordinating between campaigns and independent expenditures by reducing candidate spending limits and fining independent spenders directly. Under the city's campaign finance systems, campaigns have limits on how much they can spend. Uh, despite prohibitions against corporates giving direct, corporations giving directly to candidates, Citizens United allows corporations unlimited spending, right is done independently. And let me be clear, Corporations aren't people, and they shouldn't be allowed to engage in elections. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. 
And we will now go to, at this time, I believe Council Member Levin said he wanted to go at the end. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct, Majority Leader. Thank you. OK. So then we will now go to Council Member Menchaca, followed Not by time. Thank you. Uh, I have a few items that I want to bring up today in general orders. One is to associate my remarks with Council Member Barron and the both items on the Amazon last mile delivery warehouse. Amazon will be joining the Red Hook now potentially and parts of Sunset Park seven new distribution sites that is causing a massive issue for us. We've been in contact with the Department of Transportation, but not only are we not experiencing engagement, we're not experiencing engagement from the city and focus. And so we're maybe Councilmember Barron and I, we can talk about how we can join forces. We are also experiencing massive amounts of families without devices. And that is something that I think we, we need to do here in the city council and really focus and trying to figure out how we can um, dispel some of these myths that actually some of these devices are, are just waiting somewhere to be delivered and configured and not in the hands of young people. Um, I'm also working on a piece of legislation that is not being introduced today, but I'm asking for support. Uh, Councilmember Levin and I have been talking about this, uh, a bill that would remove NYPD effectively from the voting polling sites in the city of New York and instead define what the state allows us to to do, which are add peace officers for um, for these for the for this work and this role. Uh, if you're interested, reach out to us. Uh, we're going to be putting some briefings together, but we want to move this quickly, so we, we're going to need your support uh, to join us. And then finally, there is a resolution that Cabrera and I are, are introducing today to really send a message to the new president-elect Biden that we want resources and that the anarchist designation that we got from Trump. Uh, is a real fallacy about what our jurisdiction is really going to be uh, in the future in his administration, which is a beacon of economic engine, uh, sanctuary uh, city, and the future of this I'm country. Fired. Thank you. Thank you so much, Councilmember Menchaca. And we will now call on at this time Councilmember Rivera, followed by Councilmember Levin. Starting time. Thank you. Thank you so much, Madam Majority Leader. Always good to see you. Uh, as some of you may know, November is Puerto Rican Heritage Month, and our city is home to the largest Puerto Rican population in the country. We may not be able to gather or celebrate our heritage as we have in years past, but we can still fight for our brothers and sisters on the island. And I wanna take the time to underline the healthcare crisis that is happening in Puerto Rico. Access to quality healthcare is a human right, but this is certainly not the case there. And with COVID-19, this is especially reprehensible. I'm introducing resolution 1488 to bring attention to this issue. This legislation calls on Congress to pass and the president to sign the Puerto Rico Healthcare Fairness, Accountability and Beneficiary Access Act. This bill, which was introduced by Representative Nidia Velasquez, would increase Puerto Rico's Medicaid funding by $15 billion upon its passage, which is critical for a health care system that currently fails American citizens. Under the current federal medical assistance percentage program, Puerto Rico and other U.S. territories Medicaid programs receive a fraction of the funding that state Medicaid programs receive. As a result, Puerto Ricans are left with dismal access to affordable health care, and it has become even harder for people to access care because of the pandemic and recent natural disasters. It's irresponsible and racist to underfund affordable health care to American citizens just because they live on an American territory, especially considering the economic and political turmoil the island has faced in recent years. Passing this resolution would signify our city's solidarity in fighting this grave inequity, and I urge all of my colleagues to sign on in support. As you all know, I'm a proud Puerto Rican woman. It's, just, it's not just this month, it's every year we should be celebrating our community's contributions. And I hope that you all remember that and sign on to this legislation. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Thank you. And now we'll move on to council member Levin. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Uh, today, I'll be introducing um, three bills, intro 2056 and 2059 um, in the uh, uh, transportation committee. And um, these will be uh, uh, 
very interesting bills that will be ending the uh, the lackluster enforcement of putting of uh, putting uh, enforcement directly in the hands of, of residents in New York City um, for uh, parking violations that put others at risk. So this would be parking in bike lanes, um, bus lanes, crosswalks, sidewalks. Um, and this civilian enforcement bill model is based on the models that we've seen in the Department of uh, 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 Environmental Protection. Um, it goes beyond just reporting bad behavior to directly filing violations with the Office of Administration Trials and Hearings, otherwise known as Oath for Accountability. Residents um, uh, are able to submit violations directly and they will be adjudicated by oath and a portion of the issued fines, 25%, will go to the individual who submits the claim. Um, so this is a, a very um, uh, interesting and uh, important bill. And I want to thank uh, especially Kelly Taylor and the um, staff at our legislative division for their work on this. Um, I'm also introducing a bill with council members Holden Kalos uh, and the Manhattan Borough President Gail Brewer, intro 2158, which would create a city geospatial chief geospatial information officer um, within the Department of Information Technology and Telecommunications, do it, um, and require do it to maintain and implement a special data interoperability strategy. This is um, for the city to really maximize and optimize its use of, of GIS, um, uh, geospatial technology. Um, we need to be able to have a, a central um, accountability uh, for for that, and I just want to thank the um, uh, the geos the G GIS community out there, um, which has done an amazing job of advocating for this legislation. We've been working on it for a very long time, um, so I want to thank, in particular, uh, Wendy Dorf and Al Leidner um, for their amazing work on this, and um, and uh, I look forward to continuing to work with them on on this legislation. Thank you very much, Madam Majority Leader. Thank you so much, Council Member Levin. And we are going to close this meeting. I'd like to close out um, with an issue that's very important uh, to all of us. Um, over the past few months, New Yorkers and fellow Americans across the nation have been lending their time, their voice and energy around the racial uprisings that are taking place all throughout the country surrounding the Black Lives Matter movement. If we truly believe this notion, it is critical that we recognize that all black lives matter on the continent of Africa and throughout the entire diaspora, regardless of where we may be located. On October 3rd, the Nigerian Federal Special Anti-Robbery Squad, also known as SARS, executed a Nigerian civilian. Similar to the way we respond to police brutality at home, this topic would not have gained our attention were it not for the fact that it was videotaped and disseminated for the world to see. A little over two weeks later, reports surfaced that on October 20th, SARS indiscriminately opened fire into a crowd of a thousand protesters at the Lekki toll gate in Lagos, Nigeria, killing at least 12 civilians. But we know that there are many more. But because the Nigerian government has not acknowledged that the incident has even taken place, we do not have an accurate account of the loss of life. While we may be far from this issue geographically, this city council must recognize that injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere, especially with consideration to the thousands of Nigerian immigrants who call our city home. I look forward to discussing this issue in greater detail with my colleagues in the Black, Latino, and Asian Caucus and the entire body in formulating a plan of action to stand with our brothers and sisters. In the meantime, I urge everyone to join me in taking a stand against this heinous crime committed at the hands of SARS by posting on social media with the hashtag, hashtag and SARS, in addition to supporting the efforts of Nigerians in the diaspora organization, NIDO, a nonprofit organization supporting the collective efforts of Nigerians in the United States. This is a time for us to stand up and to make sure and to let everyone know that the Black Lives Matter movement is global. And when something happens to anyone that is black throughout the diaspora, we must all take a stand collectively and together. Thank you, and I will now turn over 
the stated meeting for Corey Johnson, our speaker, to close today's fire, meeting. Fire, fire, fire. Thank you, Madam Majority Leader. Uh, I hope everyone has a safe, 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 safe Thanksgiving. Uh, and I hope everyone's families are safe and healthy. The stated meeting of November 19th, 2020 is hereby adjourned. Thank you.